Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I hope all of you are doing well and doing great. My name is Deepak. I have 15 plus years of experience in this field. So let's move on. So let's start with the first topic and let's understand first of all that what exactly is the WordPress. WordPress is also abbreviated as like WP. So what exactly is WordPress? So WordPress is basically free and open source content management system, which is also known as CMS, which is written in PHP and it's paired with MySQL or MariaDB database. So you can opt either of the one database service you want to choose. Now, basically there are a couple of features uh, with WordPress. First is it's extended with plugin. So if you want to uh, basically integrate with different, different APIs, different, different um, you know, programs, tools, you can easily integrate. It supports that. Next one is it has easy theme system. So basically you can just customize the theme. Uh, theme. You can customize your interface the way that you want. Next one is it's search engine optimized. Next is like it's very simple and easy to use. Uh, no like very complex knowledge required. It's very simple and easy to use. It's flexible. You can make customizations the way you want and the user management. So basically, um, you know, if you want to manage users, you want to create the group, you want to assign the roles and everything that you can do very easily here. Now, let's talk about what is GCP. Before we are going to talk about GCP, guys, let's take a step back. Let's understand the cloud. So if you are able to uh, understand this entire like use case that I'm going to tell you with the help of problem statement, then everything is going to be easy, specifically in terms of concepts for you guys. So before we talk about GCP, let's talk about what exactly is a cloud, why it was evolved. So basically cloud, with the help of cloud, you can basically share your files, your data to another person. Now you are saying that like, what's new to this? So in earlier days, if you talk about, you know, in the old time, in the legacy time, uh, whenever we have to share some data, whether it's a file application, you know, uh, you should have the connectivity that you should have a network in between. In addition to that, you should have a medium. So for us, the medium that we used to use was like uh, external media. Like if I had to share some data to my friend, I'm going to use maybe the floppy drive. I'm going to use maybe the you know CD in that I'm going to copy the data or um, uh, maybe I'm going to use like LAN cable with the help of which I'm going to connect two computers and I'm going to share the data between those these two computers. This sounds easy. Uh, we, we can do it. But that was not that too easy. Think about it. I had to share my data to someone. Like I had to share 100 GB of data to someone. And if I'm going to share that data via the hard drive or pen drive, it's going to become a big hassle. First of all, the thing is that if I'm going to put that data in a hard drive or something, if that is going to be lost, my data is going to be compromised. Next thing is that if I have to share the data to someone who is living in a different city, different country, then in that case, it's going to take a while to uh, you know to send that data to him and maybe uh, like by the time he's going to get the data the, the, the critical time when he was looking for the data the time is gone so it's of no use for him and so at that time the cloud was introduced where with the help of which you can host your data people can use the, uh, your data and at the same time if you are traveling somewhere you can host your data and you can use it anywhere anytime in the beginning, when this was introduced, so many people have so many concerns that this is not a secure mechanism. This is a contradictory thing. Uh, it's going to, uh, you know, uh, spoil everything out in the beginning. So, you know, you know, like people are on the plus side and the minus side. Later on, slowly and steadily, people, uh, you know, try to understand the benefits of it. And even the people who were there on the negative side also came on the positive side. And after that, so many uh, changes happened done in the cloud world. And it has evolved so much right now in this today's world that we are huge and heavily dependent on the cloud. So many companies who are uh, basically you not know, uh, the companies who were even using the on-premise platform are eagerly looking to migrate their uh, entire platform, entire data from on-premise to the cloud. Now, why you will understand. So when we basically started at that time, we started with basically just uh, you know sharing the file. Then we realized that we, got, we are getting good response, how we can make the people life easier. Now, what we found is like what we can do is that we can try to, you know, share the files as well. Now, for example, uh, there is a company who have 100 employees and uh, this company basically, basically uh, majorly deal into the sales. They uh, try to make a sales, they, they get a contract 
and then they give that work to someone else maybe some freelance or someone and they are going to put their commission now this company has a branch let's say in india and in the us and in the uk now uh, you know there are three uh, countries involved right now india us and uk and all these three uh, uh, you know countries are working for the same client let's say there is a client whose name is xyz who has again the branches worldwide sales person who was in india he is working with indian entity which is xyz the person who was in us is working with the us uh, you know branch the person who is in uk is working with the uh, uk branch now what they did they were entering the data in the excel sheet and uh, you know the person who was in india again the time zone difference is going to be there so the person who was in india he uh, created the entry of xyz client he added some value and he added some he added some percentage of profit and he just signed up for a day after that the person in the uk he came in and he was able to make a gig he updated and he was trying to update and he realized that wow who updated this entry then he is going to override his entry and he is going to update it and the person in the us when he will come online then it will be you know the night for the indian people uh, evening for the uk people he is going to override this now this kind of issue is going to have uh, it's going to make the data inconsistent and it's not no one's fault it's not it's not going to be a fault of the us employee or uk employee or indian employee the problem is that uh, we don't know like who is working on which data because we have one file well some will say that that's not a difficult thing we can have multiple copy of a file that sounds easy think about it if i have 100000 employees in my organization am i going to maintain 100000 uh, copies of it no right it's going to become a big nightmare how am i able to see that which data is inconsistent which data is consistent how much sales we have given every month i'm not going to compile all this uh, 100000 files and accumulate the data then uh, the cloud gave us a solution wherein you can store your file directly on the cloud like a sharepoint for example and you can make an uh, edit update uh, directly in the real time so for example if i am in india i'm working on 25th row uh, the people when uh, they will come online uh, the people who are in uk when they will come online they will be able to see that i am at 25th row i'm making an entry in that cell same thing will happen for the people who are in the us so it will really really make everyone life so easier that you don't have to maintain multiple copies you will you don't have to worry about um you know like your data is getting manipulated and everything which make the life easier now after that uh, we decided well we got a very good response we are able to make a good progress now what extra thing we can do now these are the two problem statement i'm going to explain you then i'm going to explain you the solution statement if you are able to understand these two problem statement and you are able to understand these two solution statement then the concept of entire cloud is going to be clear to you guys so the first problem statement is let's say by whose name bob he used to work in a company and uh, at the five he resigned he was a developer he resigned his organization and he opened his own startup because he realized that i am working in my organization from last 30 years i gave a very good profit to my organization now he being a developer he thought to you know create his own organization so because he uh, thought to have a startup he don't have that much funding so what he did he hired 10 employees and for those 10 employees he just to save money actually uh, because he his hands were tight so what he did he basically purchased 10 older configuration laptops like second hand laptops so he purchased 10 laptops with core to duo processor and um, you know he purchased with let's say uh, windows 7 operating system the hard drive was let's say 250 gb ram was 2 gb so he purchased those laptops now he got a project from an organization which was of tenure 6 months wherein um, you know he realized that in order to uh, deliver that project all his 10 employees will need higher configuration devices because these developers will require heavy softwares like visual studio and different different software those softwares are not compatible with the laptops that he has first uh, it's not compatible with the operating system that he has second it's not compatible with the hardware specification that he has now the solution is that he can purchase a new laptops if he is going to purchase a new laptop then in that case he have to make an investment for 10 laptops and what he will do after 10 months maybe he can get another project after 10 months maybe which is for 2 3 years and for for that project you know the kind of work and effort which is required can be done on the older laptop and maybe after 3 years now he will have like 10 plus 10 20 laptops and those 20 laptops are going to be on the fly because maybe he got now i3 after 3 years or 4 years there is going to be a newer configuration so maybe that will not work so what he will do with that and other thing is that now if he has to purchase new laptop he has to basically make an investment on the hardware 
which is the laptop he has to purchase the investment on the you know software which is the operating system he has to purchase a license which is basically the windows keys and at the same time he will require some maintenance he will require a person who can basically help in installing the operating system maintaining it you know doing all this kind of administration stuff so it will require a lot of time and money now let's say he got that project uh, for six months of uh, ten thousand dollar and he realized that the kind of investment time and effort he has to make he has to spend let's say fifteen thousand dollars so in, in in general he is getting zero profit so in that case what will happen this guy can leave that project now it sounds easy but not because that was his first project if he's going to leave that project it will spoil his name and fame that's the first problem statement now let's talk about the second problem statement let's say there is a guy who work in a company he don't have that kind of challenge like the uh, you know like the first guy has challenge basically with the cost and all so this uh, second guy works in a big organization he got a laptop uh, which is a very hard configuration so he got a laptop with i7 processor he got a laptop with one tb of hard drive 16 gb of ram and he worked as a solution architect and his job is to design the solution for the company uh, by understanding the use case and deliver it in there now his company in which he works the second guy uh, his company got a very big project and uh, that was like those customers were the highest revenue generator for them so what he did he worked day and night and he realized that now he will require to create eight virtual machine two with windows server 2012 two with windows server 2016 two with windows Server 2019 and two ubuntu based operating system a virtual machine he realized that even though he has a good hardware configuration but he cannot build all the virtual machine on his system so maybe he will require extra hardware like hard drive or he will require extra uh, you know laptops so what he did he created the all virtual machine all environment on the external hard drive and on his own laptop he worked day and night after one month when he was traveling to client location he lost his laptop or he lost his hard drive now he is going to go to the customer side and when the meeting was scheduled if he's going to say that oh i lost my hard drive my my system it's going to be embarrassing from him right and he's representing a company not as an individual now in both the cases cloud has given the solution in the first use case where the person uh, who was working in you know the person who was owning the company where just for six months project he has to make an investment of fifteen thousand dollar to purchase the hardware and maintain it what he can do is he can leverage the cloud now cloud has reached to that extent wherein you can just uh, spin up your resources on the cloud as per your requirement wherein this guy can pay for six months he can take a subscription he can create 10 virtual machines on the cloud with the configuration that he needs like windows 10 and with like, let's say one tb of hard drive 8 gb of ram whatever the configuration that he wants and he can download the files in the rdb format so and then from all these 10 laptops he uh, the employees can rdb which is remote desktop uh, con uh, connection that they can make and they can log into their devices and they can work after six months of work when the work is done they, they can just decommission these virtual machines and simple they can save the money now for this ten thousand dollar project if you look at the investment, he just had to pay hardly three thousand dollars. So he made a profit of seventy percent. Wherein in the past, where he had a loss of fifty percent, now he is able to make a profit of seventy percent, which is a really good uh, good deal for him. Now, similar with the second uh, use case, where the person who was traveling to another uh, you know city or country to plant location, so now he don't have to carry this bulky hardware, this laptops, hard drive. He can just build everything on the cloud. And he can just go with empty handed and at a customer's location. He simply can, uh, you know, log in with his cloud account and he can just demonstrate everything. So, here, if you see having the need of everything, like having the need of entire platform uh, where you require bulk, bulk hardware, now there is no bulky hardware required. Having the need of uh, everything with your hands, now you don't require, uh, you know, anything. So, having from everything to nothing, that's the kind of the beauty of the cloud that the cloud has given. Now, I hope that you got this understanding. Now, the organizations basically have given you different, uh, you know, so many advantages, like, for example, with the case of Microsoft, Microsoft has given you the Azure uh, service, which is basically as a cloud service. Similar, uh, your Google has given you the cloud service, service, which is named as GCP, which is Google Cloud Platform. Similar, your Amazon has given you the cloud service, which is known as AWS. Because these are the different, different cloud services. Today, we are talking about GCP which is again one of the cloud service, which is uh, given by the Google. Now, what is GCP? GCP stands for Google Cloud Platform 
this is a suite of cloud computing services and management tools offered by google now if you talk about the locations as if now google uh, cloud services are available in all these locations which are being highlighted now sooner and uh, the later these cloud services are going to be expanded to different different countries now if you talk about gcp domains these are the major domains of the gcp so uh, again uh, you know uh, e Generally, each and every domain in itself is a different world. So for every domain, I can talk about at least four to five hours, but based on the you know time constraint we have, this is the webinar, not the class. So I can just give you a little bit overview of it. So compute domain basically is responsible for when you are basically you know uh, creating the services, like for example, you want to create a computing resource like a website or a database or a, a virtual machine, you want to define the resources for that that falls into the compute category uh, in the storage and database basically you define that what kind of storage you want to use it suppose different kind of storage you can opt for the storage that you want to use and depending on utilization you are going to be built for it next one is networking some people think that since it's a cloud world you cannot create your own uh, internal ip that's not uh, true so basically in this case you can create your um, you know internal ips you can just create your uh, you know public schema or private schema even you can decide your own public ip address all that kind of customization customization is supported by this next is a big data is supported right integration with that then you have a developer tools basically if you are a developer there are certain tools which are available that even you can uh, leverage from the cloud to on-prem and on-prem to cloud you can have a direct integration next is identity and security so it also supports iam identity access management wherein you can just define different different users groups and uh, to different different group you can assign permissions and the users who are going to be part of that group are going to inherit those permission next is your iot which is internet of things wherein you can just uh, uh, you know combine with different technologies and form a single solution last one is a cloud ai so it also supports an direct integration with the artificial intelligence clear now if you have to host the uh, you know uh, basically you know uh, wordpress or gcp so it basically consists of two major steps in the first step you have what you have to do is you're going to go on a platform like this you are going to start a new project like the way we have started a new project and you have to select the wordpress instance that you can see in the screenshot once you're going to select the wordpress instance you're going to have a screenshot like this uh, once you have done that, then in that case, you can configure your uh, WordPress instance and then you can deploy it directly here, as you can see. Now, if you talk about, um, you know, uh, once you have deployed, once you have basically created a WordPress instance, then in that case, uh, after that, you have to basically, uh, uh, you know, map your domain name and you have to set up your SSL certificate. SSL certificate basically is used for, um, you know, encryption when uh, the communication is going to happen between the client and the server that uh, communication has to be in the interpret format now in this case uh, here i'm going to provide example.com this example.com is going to be resolved to this ip address because i have done the binding at the same time i have to basically use https instead of http if i'm going to use only http then in that case the data which is going to flow from my client side to the server side is going to be in a plain text format where anyone can intercept and can try to listen to my communication so uh, these were the steps now if you talk about uh, learning at Adrika, so if you're interested in going in much more detail about the entire course and all then this is going to be the learning path for Adrika. so basically in the first class you're going to learn about google cloud platform its components its dependencies with the hands-on in the second class you're going to learn about how you can manage gcp with the perspective hands-on in the third class you're going to learn about google cloud platform what kind of uh, networks you can have how you can basically create the you know different networks virtual networks virtualization everything with the perspective hands-on then in the fourth class you're going to learn about security and identity fundamentals with the perspective hands-on on it then after that uh, you are going to learn about compute services with the perspective hands-on then you're going to learn about data storage services with the perspective hands-on on it then in the next class you're going to learn about architecting with google kubernetes engine with the perspective hands-on then after that you're going to uh, learn about application development with the perspective hands-on then you're going to learn about big data and ai services with the perspective hands-on and in the last class you're going to learn about automation how you can basically automate the entire things with the hands-on at the end you're going to become a superhero with a cape like this 
Just kidding. So you will have a lot of knowledge at the end timing. Mean. So what are different benefits of hosting the WordPress on the GCP? One of the primary benefit is the uptime. Since this is a cloud platform, you don't have to uh, manage, maintain. So it's going to be highly available and it's going to have highly resiliency. So you are going to have a lot of uptime. Next is that it's very simple to deploy. It's not like that you have to basically uh, do things because it's like a host of so Google basically many uh, complex platforms. So they have made the life easier for you to support a lot of clusters clusters are going to be the clusters cluster the backer service as well so there's a scale up you want to scale down depending on your requirement you can scaling is that you want to increase or decrease the resources let's say i started with my project with uh, maybe 4 gb of ram and uh, 500 gb of hard drive i realized that i'm getting a very good response from the market from the people and i want to increase the resources so you can easily increase the resources like for example you can you know increase from 500 gb to uh, 1 TB at the same time, you can increase the RAM as well. So it's basically scalable. You can easily customize it and as well as you can easily scale up your resources as well. So here in this case, uh, it also you can uh, scale up or scale down the resources depending on your requirement. OK, guys, so we can wrap up for today. Thank you for joining this today's webinar. I hope that you have enjoyed a lot and learned a lot. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.